organized by squash kashmir just agriculture and in collaboration with agro environmental development education and farmers welfare society punjab now i would like to introduce our speaker of the session dr ashish patel senior agronomist r and d division konar group let me briefly introduce himself dr ashish sir has acquired his msc and phd degrees with a specialization in soil science and agriculture chemistry from sardar krishnagar dantiwada agriculture university during 2015 to 2017 and navsari agriculture university during 2017 to 2020 respectively several achievements are there to his credit out of which some are letter of appreciation from good agronomy services at maldives best oral and best poster presentations at national workshop on pesticide residue management and techniques for food safety and security best article publication on hydroponics a new era for farming skill development course on secondary agriculture organized by icar india and also world bank and a course on organic farming a step to doubling farming organized by government of india initially in his career as a senior agronomist dr ashish sir has built protocols for fertilizer application for different crops in hydroponic systems and he has mastered on nft crops like lettuce basil curly kale pok choy swiss chard dutch buckets and grow slabs of different wean crops and different microgreens and edible flowers he has also determined plant growth conditions in nvph or polyhouse and set planning and care schedules and used to provide agronomy services to 26 national and international projects in hydroponics later on the trash sir has served as a general manager produce at brio hydroponics a unit of brio agri producer company limited currently at konar group he is working on vertically grown turmeric ginger and ashwagandha and in nft systems like brahmi basil dill seeds and dutch bucket systems in ashwagandha centella turmeric etc and he has also working on growing different medicinal plants into hydroponic farm and check out feasibility on the basis of medical property and economically viability so with this brief introduction at this juncture i extend my warm welcome to our guest speaker of this session dr ashish patel sir to address the gathering welcome you sir welcome you uh, over to you sir thank you thank you so much is a uh, nice tro- uh, introduction by the uh, sandeep sir uh, now i will uh, uh, directly uh, point of uh, my presentation uh, can you share the my presentation otherwise technical team is, is there anyone okay yeah sir can share yeah so you are sharing from your side yes i will share okay okay
it's a visible yes sir yes. it is visible okay so uh welcome but, to every but, hello sir the screen is uh, somewhat wider could you okay. just please zoom, uh, zoom, zoom yeah zoom in ho gaya isko thoda screen ko na uske ratio se theek se uh it is slightly to the right it is slightly to the right side yeah now it is okay uh, yeah perfect sir Now perfect. Still, it is somewhat. Could you please keep the title slide, sir? Uh, yes, sir. It is not visible completely. Uh, it is in a zooming mode, so you need to zoom it out a bit. Now. now visible mm yes sir okay so sorry for inconvenient uh, now let's start uh, with uh, our topics uh, hydroponic farming and uh, it's essential factor for developing and how to operating so we uh, develop which are the factor are affecting for the developing and which parameter we observe for the developing of hydroponics commercial hydroponics projects and how to operate so we can see a uh, step by step first what is the hydroponics everyone knows what is the hydroponics uh, uh, just we can see the simple it's art is the art of growing a plant without soil is known as a hydroponics any one plants can grow into the hydroponics system with what it need when it need and how amount of need without genetical change we can grow any plants into the hydroponic system with the proper selection of the system with the proper environmental we can grow any plants into the hydroponics systems then why we need to a hydroponics farm we currently grown a well good agriculture practices with the traditional farming with the soil based farming and high tech soil based farming so why we need to a hydroponics farm so these are the basic difference between the soil based traditional farming and hydroponics farming uh, first we say the fertilizer and water use in traditional farming and uh, soil based farming the fertilizer and water are losses through the percolation transpiration and uh, leaching but in a case of hydroponic systems the water cannot be a losses through other uh, system only the losses through the transpiration it's that's why we a uh, 90% water save than the traditional farming and we can say in fertilizer the fertilizer is directly water soluble fertilizer applied through the plant root zone so he can directly absorb from there so fertilizer losses are less so very effective when utilization of soil in this topic the soil based farming we need a fertile soil then a productive soil when also a favorable climate condition when we talk about the hydroponics farming we can grow anywhere it's a barrier soil unproductive soil also a concrete structure we can also a grow a hydroponics farming then we talks about the growth of and productivity yield differences then growth is 30% faster in the hydroponic systems when we discuss the example for the letters we growing into the outside uh, of the field is a soil based farming they require a 60 to 65 days for the maturity or the harvesting stage this as compared to in hydroponics farming 
we require only 40 to 45 days because in hydroponic system we cannot be a uh, any biotic or biostic stress are provided to the plants so he can grow enjoy fully growing that's why the 30 percent higher growth as well as 20 percent more yield as compared to soil based farming in concept of workloading sustainability and pest and disease in workloading in uh, soil based farming we are doing a uh, tillage uh, tillage then plowing then weeding in case of hydroponics and high tech farming we no need it when we can say in sustainability then unseasonal rainfall is very dangerous for the current uh, scenario it's the losses of uh, millions and millions tons of products products and of the farmers where in case of hydroponics farming generally we uh, growing in a protected cultivation so we can grow a uh, very effectively as well as very intensively when we can say the pest and disease the more soil based diseases are introduced in day by day into the soil based crops while in case of hydroponics no uh, available soils so it's uh, less infestation of disease as well as we growing into the protected cultivation so is pest are uh, less observed also the further uh, in hydroponics in world population is 83 millions of people are aid into every year into the world so we assume that 2050 the people of population is 9.8 billion so we need a 70 percent more ill and more food for the this meat to these people's food that's why we need a 593 millions of hectare in 2050 for a fuel fill of feed for the 9.8 billion people it means it's a large amount of lead it's almost double size of india it is nothing possible or uh, sorry it's not possible to uh, this type this much uh, quantity of soil we convert into the fertile soil so we need uh, another options so that's why the hydroponics are more uh, role major role are uh, for the uh, fulfill the feed to the 9.8 billion peoples and achieve in future also we have a less availability of fresh uh, fresh water that's why the we have a options of hydroponics farming in net in uh, next generations and also a uh, use of uh, commercially hydroponics farming and developing is a huge demand in current scenario is four to five times fall um, increasing in last 10 years also a 9.5 billion in current year uh, and past year the business now uh, 2028 it's 22.2 uh, billion uh, us dollar markets are achieved then uh, the according to cgr is it means compound alien growth rate it forecasting 13.53 percent into 2027 it's a huge uh, uh demand in current uh, and uh next future for hydroponics farming when we develop the commercial hydroponics farming these are the different advantages with revenue generation uh then also a uh, large land not required we can do the vertical farming then less and reusable water some systems are uh further i uh in next slides i will explain what are the system which is used for the reusable water then we have also a effective use of nutrient no nutrient losses that's why cost saving and uh, effectively use of nutrient then easy paste and management then also uh, we use a little bit of pesticides or not uh, some uh, hydroponics farm is not no use of single uh, drops of pesticides so food safety is also uh, easy easy to harvest and sustainable farming regular incomes these are the best advantage for the commercial hydroponics farming now we uh, to discuss on our major points so what are the factors for developing a commercial hydroponic farming and what are the points you are not for the which type of farming you uh, adopt and which systems you are adopt for the commercial hydroponics farming these are the different factors we discuss on one by one uh, first is the structure 
then uh, two type of structure. It's one is outdoor type of projects and uh, another one is indoor type of project. What is outdoor type of project? The available of natural source of light. It means sunlight are available and we develop this type of project is known as an outdoor project. And uh, in this project, we have a fan pen poly house structure. Then natural ventilated poly house structure is known as a LVPH. Then insect proof net house, then rain protected net house. This is the new technology which is introduced by the uh, Israel. Is currently in four to five projects already developed into the India. Then when can in in indoor projects the natural light uh, source of light not available when we provide uh, artificial light as that type of project is known as a indoor project. The project is developed in balcony, room, warehouse, underground rooms, and uh, anywhere we can uh, are growing up uh, indoor projects and develop projects. The different uh, classification of the hydroponic systems, different systems are available currently. So we discuss them one by one and what are the uh, advantage and what are the disadvantage we discuss. This is a weak system. These are the basic system for the hydroponic system. You can try our homes, but we cannot be a utilize in a, uh, uh, we cannot be a utilize into the commercial hydroponics projects. Uh, in, in this system, the reservoir with a nutrient are into a one uh, reservoir and then we are absorbs the nutrient and supply to the growing tree. Tray. So plants can easily absorb the nutrients and he can uh, grow easily. But it cannot be a use for commercial purpose because weak uh, system are not able to uh, efficient nutrient are supplied to the plants at the particular stage of plants. Second is a ebo and flow system. It's also known as a flood and drain systems. In this system, in this system, the plant uh, reserve plants are growing into the one channel, or uh, I said is a gully, and then one reservoir. They supply to the nutrient in a uh, in into the this growing tray. First, they apply the fully water. It means it's flood situation. Then after some time, some few seconds, the whole water are uh, water are drain out. It means flood and drain out. In this system are uh, uh, use some uh, type of commercially project, but generally uh, in this system drawback are when you use the pebbles and gravel and hydroton at that time, the system are failure when the electricity are fail. Then deep water culture. This system is also uh, used into the commercial hydroponics farm, but uh, it not used into the larger uh, plants but uh, larger plant in the sense of wine crops as well as uh, big size of plants, we cannot be on multi cuttings plants, we cannot be a grow into the deep water culture. In this system, the reservoir are filled with the nutrient with water and styrofoam seeds and into the hole, the different plants are growing and his uh, styrofoam or uh, thermocol are floating in this nutrient solution and roots are easily absorbed to the uh, nutrient from the uh, reservoir or uh, reservoir from the reservoir tanks. But in, uh, in this situation, we also add end pump because here the uh, dissolved oxygen level is very decreasing in this system. So we maintain the dissolved oxygen into the reservoir systems. NFT system is known as a uh, nutrient film techniques. This is the most and widely worldwide used into the commercial hydroponics system. In this system, one reservoir with a nutrient solution, then we uh, in one gully, uh, gully or channel, the one side, they drop off the nutrient and other side, they out from the uh, reservoir. So it's totally circulate every time into the uh, uh, channel or gully. In this system, the one uh, drawback is when the plant uh, pump failure, otherwise power cut off at the time roots are dry and uh, we have a losses of different crosses. 
That's why uh, the system, nutrient film techniques, as well as leaf and furrow, both system are combined and we use into the commercial projects. These are the uh, use into the commercial A-frame uh, vertical farming system in NFT systems, then flat NFT systems. Drift system, everyone knows what is the drift system, the uh, drift line are networking and drip or drop by drop are uh, nutrient or water into the plant root zones. Uh, it's known as a drip system. Uh, in hydroponics, uh, majorly a drip, a drip system are used into the wine crops as well as uh, larger crops are growing. The one is a Dutch bucket system. In this system, the one buckets with fill with the aggregated media such as a hydroton, pebbles like media and dripper lines are drop by drop. They give on the nutrient with the water and out of this nutrient are uh, excess or drainage nutrient are reconnecting into the nutrient tanks. So it's circulated. It's a passive uh, hydroponic systems. We here, we can grow uh, different types of wine as well as uh, different types of uh, uh, bigger size of crops we can easily grow. It's also we have used as a uh, fruiting crops also, we have uh, used for, uh, for growing, we can use a uh, Dutch bucket systems. These are the Dutch bucket system. We already are uh, planting of bell peppers. This is the grow big system. We can uh, I have a growing a uh, different cucumbers. In a uh, grow big system, we cannot be a collector return water. It's a only uh, you uh, only the Dutch bucket system. We can you uh, collect the return waters. But in case of uh, grow big system or trough system, we cannot be a collector return water. These are the major drawbacks in these systems. Uh, currently and uh, uh, Indian market as well as international market uh, for the wine crops, mostly uh, this cocoa peat grow slab are used for the growing a uh, different uh, uh, wine crops as well as fruiting crops like uh, berries, then blueberries, like crops are growing from the uh, this grow slabs. It's a uh, with a lower ishi, it's ready to use directly spread it and apply the water and you can ready for the uh, uh, for the plantings so it's very convenient for the wine crops then another concept not a hydroponics but it's similar context is a concept is a aeroponics in this system we can apply the nutrient from the directly root zone through the fog of, uh, through the nozzles and uh, plants can absorb the nutrient with the water and their plants are growing uh, through aeroponics uh, seed of uh, potato we can multiply by these techniques are used for the seedlings of potato then aquaponics everyone know it's both system uh, simultaneously we can uh, growing a fish as well as we can growing a plants the uh, fish or aquatic extracta are used for the as a nutrient of the uh, our uh, crops but in this techniques, majorly uh, drawback is we cannot be a balance of nutrient into the plants. So deficiency of uh, different nutrient are observed into the plants. Another concept is a hydroponics water. It is a very used uh, currently high tech dairy farming. He are a use of hydroponics water. One of pro one of the project in Banas Dairy in Gujarat. It is a, a, a SGS largest dairy platform is also uh, used as a hydroponics water at the pilot project. In this system, no medias are required, only the grains are uh, spread it and they, they sprouted after seven to eight uh, weeks. They are, uh, sorry, seven to eight days are ready and then directly used for the, uh, as a cattle feed. Then uh, microgreens, it's also a very a useful concept for the uh, current scenario. Uh, uh, peoples are very aware from the microgreens. So it's demand day by day increasing. In microgreens is 70 times more nutrients per gram per, as compared to mature. So it's known as a superfood. Uh, and also uh, Gujarat government are introduced into the pilot project into the uh, primary school for the uh, mid-term food 
into the microgreens are introduced after the election. Microgreens are uh, different uh, uh, into the, I have this, uh, uh, so the picture, red amaranthus, mustard microgreens and rocket microgreens. These are the, I will grow into the Maldives when I go to the Maldives for the agronomist uh, consultancy. This is the edible flower. It's also a current market is a day by day increase for the garnishing, taste purpose, flavor. Uh, they are used for the, uh, this, um, edible farmers in edible farmers currently in big basket he given uh, uh, around 150 bucks for the 10 grams so it's a high value crops then environment is definitely important factors uh, is environment among them temperature are very uh, very very important for the growing into the house uh, i said house means in the poly house uh, uh, structure uh, temperature is important for the growth and development structure, also a germination, growth and development of plant. We are generally 70 to 27 uh, poly, maintained into the poly out structure. So maximum crops are growing into the same range. We are uh, using the two types of maintain the temperature for the better growth and development of crops. It's atmospheric temperature, it's known as a air temperature or water. Yaniki, nutrient solution temperature, also known as a root zone temperature. In temperature uh, are directly correlated with the, our photosynthesis. It means directly correlated with the, our food. So it's majorly me, me, impact into the, our photosynthesis, transpiration, respiration. So it's maintained is most important into the, our curriculum. Uh, different systems are used for the maintaining uh, temperature, fan and paint when use a fan and pet polio structure then, then NVPH and uh, net house, then we maintain temperature to the Fogger system. And when the central boiler or heating pipes are generally not used in India, but in uh, internationally, they use for the increasing the temperature into the glass house. The fan and pet systems, the working on the two principal, negative pressure system and positive pressure system. Among uh, here, the pair are used is directly or uh, connected with the motor and it's continuously, it's permanently wet up, uh, through the sprinkling. In negative pressure system, generally Indian hydroponics fan and pair uh, system are used the negative pressure system principal hydroponics farm. In this system, one side of pair and another side of exhaust fan. So what do exhaust fan are uh, hot water, hot air are avoid from the house, he exhausts. So new air are passing through the pail and he is a cooler air. That's that, that types of they maintain the temperature. It's simple our, uh, in our house, we use the coolers. The same principle use here. And a positive pressure system, uh, generally there's not use of any kind, uh, any house. I cannot be a C in uh, any house of this, use this principle and uh, run the farm. It's a reverse uh, than the positive negative pressure systems. These are the basic structure of fan and pair uh, we have used. In fan and pair, exhaust fan and pair, it not be a more than 25 meter up, uh, should be not be a more than 25 meters. And also a fan number of fan is according to the your structure. Then cellular pair are available into the market two inchy, four inchy, six inchy and 12 inchy depth but generally commercial hydroponics farm are used as a six inch farm. And indoor, we use a AC, air conditioner systems. Fogar, Fogar are used for the both parameters for controlling as well. One is a, a relative humidity and another one is a temperature. We are uh, uh, in humidity also are maintained through the Fogar and uh, temperature. Are, we can uh, sprinkling uh, water and the water droplets are very important for the cooling uh, parts. The when dropper are smaller size, then increasing uh, temperature very fast. Central boiling system and heating pipe. I already say this is not used in India, but it is internationally used for the glass house for increasing the temperature. Root uh, nutrient solution and uh, root zone temperature maintain is generally required 20 to 30 Celsius 
very high or very low, it's very uh, uh, affected uh, into the yield. He cannot be a plant cannot be a easily absorbs the nutrient from the plants. And as well as the higher temperature are also uh, decrease the dissolved oxygen level into the water. So fungal attacks and root roots are observed into the roots. These are the nutrient solution chiller and uh, nutrient solution heater are uh, used for the control environment. Then relative humidity, everyone know humidity, uh, quantity of water present into air is known as humidity. Relative humidity is the amount of water vapor present into the air compared to the maximum amount of water vapor air can be hold at temperature. Matlab, jo, uh, this temperature, how many water amount are uh, uh, absorbed by the uh, by the air is known as a relative humidity. And relative humidity, the relative humidity uh, uh, are measured by the hydrometer. And uh, both temperature and relative humidity measured by the hydrothermometer. The humidity are range required 50 to 80 percent. The higher humidity, it means the stomata are closed onto the plants. That's why they reduce the transpiration. They cannot be a suck of water from the root zone. So nutrient are also a, a, a transpiration are a effect. That's why the translocation of food material and nutrients are not uh, properly. That's why the, we have symptoms of the calcium deficiency and the rip tops. When the relative humidity high, then more paste and disease are uh, multiplication and spore of germination are highly favorable for the disease. Also, pollen are not dispatched. That's why yield are reduction. When low relative humidity, the higher rate of transpiration, the plant lose their turgidity and we can lose the, our yield. So how can we maintain the relative humidity? When relative humidity are very low, then we use the fogger. The fogger sprinkling the air into the house. That's why increase the humidity. But for higher humidity, how to control? At the time we close the pail, only the running of exhaust fan. So exhaust fan, what do you do? The amount of uh, air present into uh, amount of water present into air, it throw out from the house. And air circulated fan, there cannot be uh, 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 not a moisture and, uh, near by the plant canopy. So it's very useful techniques for the reducing humidity. Light, light is a directly positive correlation with the word yield. It's a uh, directly correlation with photosynthesis. The photosynthesis are most basic metabolism process. That's why light is a directly correlated, positive correlated with the our ill. So light intensity is must be required, uh, maintained or minimum or maximum. Uh, it's 10, uh, uh, 10 thousands and 18 thousands uh, lux required for the better production of lights, uh, better production of crops into the our house. In outdoor project, we use uh, or maintain the lights through the shed net. 50% aluminum shed net we are used for the uh, generally poly out structure for reducing the light intensity. And uh, also a uh, different color of uh, green color than blue color nets are available for different crops. Uh, according to crops, we have used the, uh, this type of shed nets. In indoor project, we use HID LED. Generally, commercial indoor farming are used LED. Is 740 to 770 nanometers wavelength are ready to available into the market LED. So we install and we can grow the plants. Or according to crops, we also uh, customize our specification of wavelengths. Carbon dioxide, generally no uh, anyone uh, maintain the carbon dioxide artificially. Uh, otherwise, uh, through a uh, pressure or release of uh, carbon dioxide into the house, it's generally uh, naturally maintained almost, but we can observe these uh, things into the carbon dioxide. Main important things is nutrient solution and water. They are way, we, this is the media for our plants. So we, uh, in water, we require a premium quality of water. Uh, in a, we, a minimum level of TDS, then alkalinity, hardness, iron level, everything we have earlier taste, we can feasible first water, which water we use, he can conveniently available or not available. This type of uh, are we uh, 
we observe and then after we install the our hydroponics projects uh, definitely we use the ro water but its tds is more than more to more 4000 or 3000 tds than ro how can you, uh, a project are viable so ro water uh, are used into the hydroponics system because in ro water no single or less uh, sorry less amount of anion and cation so we it, it is a considered as a base solution so uh, i i can give on the one example uh, ro water is like a, a white board so we uh, assume and we uh, thinking i will draw this type of painting and this type of painting so we can drawing this type of painting so ro water is a stand we use for the it is a base solution that's why we use ro water the nutrient differences uh, 17 essential plants nutrients are available basic primary secondary and micronutrients everyone knows uh, this nutrient are available uh, but in hydroponic system two factor to keep in mind the com composition of your nutrient it may be a content all of the elements required for the plant growth in current ratio we can use a nutrient suppose major nutrient we require our growing at this plants we require nitrogen this much so we first we study then after we make a nutrient for the, our plants that's why we grow the fully growth and faster growth of plants here not available of soil so he act as a buffer we apply the more nitrogen more urea they store the soils and slowly and slowly plants are absorbed from the soils here it cannot be a possible so we uh, study the first which crop we grow then after we uh, making a nutrient according to this crops and also a strength of ec because we here hydroponics farm we not be uh, every time to analysis we assume through the ec so ec are most important factor for the hydroponics projects uh, these are the nutrient making and application uh, generally hydroponics are uh, making a part a and part b but uh, i have a developer three parts part a part b and part c and also uh, we require a ph buffer solution uh, when ph decrease in when used as a phosphoric acid and ph increase for potassium hydroxide these are the auto doser systems and then uh, they working uh, current uh, working temp uh, working tanks they uh, analysis the ec and ph then after we automatically absorbs the nutrient from the tank a and b and maintain the working tanks and these working tanks are always be a uh, continuously flow with into nft system and ph also maintained through the same ph meter through what is the electric conductivity this is the basic rule we are in when you develop the hydroponics farm or commercial run up the commercial hydroponics farm then this is the best things to know about how uh, working uh, uh, working uh, electric conductivity what is electric conductivity how to measure it so electric conductivity is a ability to solution to carry the current electric current it means uh, solution it means water may how many anion or cation he are uh, uh, calculate and we saw in the point of uh, micro siemens per centimeter or milli siemens of per centimeter when a, we use the uh, ro water the ec is less it means anion cation less available into the uh, ro water when we apply the nutrient so, uh, as a particular quantity then increase the ec it means the availability of anion cation are increase into the uh, uh, water and uh, ec and tds are is a convergible factor is uh, in ec we uh, can multiply by 500 then it's automatically uh, met the value is a tds it's known as a ppm then potential ph what is the ph is a numerical scale of hydrogen in concentration of solution is known as a ph it's a range of uh, uh, 0 to 14 but we have maintained 5 to 6.5 uh, for ph decreasing we use the phosphoric acid ph increasing we use as a potassium hydroxide the growing media is also important here we cannot be used as a soil so media uh, these are the characteristics of media the chemical is stable that's clean 
no um, uh, create a water logging problem also uh, no much uh, is no much water logging problem but water holding capacity is high also air holding capacity is high so buffer capacity also available into the media so different types of media are available into the market but i have worked on three media oasis cube hydrotone it's known as a clay club and gross lab in gross lab available of coco peat or coco chips location location is also a most important factor because when you when you grow a uh, uh, different exotic crops or lettuce basil kale the is market are in metro city so we you can uh, install the project of the uh, near about the metro city and we can use uh, the directly or uh, fresh vegetables to the market but we can use uh, uh, growing a uh, uh, bell pepper then uh, cucumber then it's the uh, interior parts is okay for that because is the uh, durability are longer that's why the uh, location are most important for the uh, commercial projects the flooring is also most important the soil are not interrupt about the crops also pest and disease are not available into the projects as well as uh, uh, weed weed also uh, is a hosting of the different pest and disease so weeding a weed is more uh, weed mat is a most important factor into the commercial projects these are the crops we can uh, grow lolo rosa different type of lettuce lolo rosa locano romin iceberg red oak green oak summer crispino butterhead then these are the basil parsley thyme rosemary spinach swiss chard bok choy kale rocket oregano these are the different wine crop commercially grown red bell pepper yellow bell pepper cherry tomato yellow zucchini green zucchini and kira uh, cucumber then also a uh, yellow cherry tomato black cherry tomato it's a uh, truly exotic uh, items it's a uh, highly valuable items into the uh, metro cities now current scenario is the uh, medicinal plants uh, turmeric black turmeric ginger black ginger also growing into the house then these are the different medicinal plants brahmi it's a bacoside is a very high content compared to the uh, outer side then ashwagandha kalme uh, then centrala then uh, gymnema and uh, saffron saffron also uh, currently growing into the uh, uh, indoor project with the protected cultivation with the highly uh, automatic farming you can also uh, grow these are the real picture uh, i have already grown in this uh, crops different type of lettuce here the indoor we i have growing a, a strawberry then these are the different wine crops cucumber i have a, a maldive at that time we i have growing a cucumber different types of microgreens lettuce these are the bell peppers uh, this is cucumber project and this is the bell pepper uh, these are the different medicinal this is a kalme vertical haldi turmeric this is the i have uh, currently i have working on the uh, saffron indoor saffron this is the brahmi black turmeric then this is the turmeric also important of the nutrient and pest and disease these are the nutrient deficiency you can observe and accordingly you change to the, your nutrient solution this is also uh, uh, important for the deficiency of plants sometime the observation uh, you must be observed the every uh, day and he learn plants learn to you the what are the i have changes and you can also changes through the nutrient here the you can see the deep burning into the plants it's a, due to the higher relative humidity the plant cannot be a transpirate so it cannot be a translocated of food so calcium are not translocated that's why the deep burning are due to the calcium deficiency then this is also uh, observed through lankiness of plants uh, the plant uh, cannot be a proper sunlight that's why they lanky over cladling of seedlings then too much time of germination into the tray also a uh, not proper uh, sunlight are available at that time plants are lanky these are the different pests are observed into the our crops curly kale spinach um, uh, caterpillars then uh, thrips mealybugs aphids these are the different disease these are disease also are due to the higher relative humidity the down remedy in basil it's a uh, heracobal it's a, it's a totally loss of our plants so it's a very um, hard to manage it into the house 
these are the different uh, uh, fight against pest and disease. These are the action we can do for the our housing. It's uh, totally organic. We cannot be a use of any any kind of synthetic pesticides. Ha, huh, yes, you can use very uh, the economic threshold level of uh, increasing. Then then you can use uh, at least one spray of uh, any kind of uh, sucking paste or any kind of. Uh, but it's the uh, when we uh, thinking the totally losing at that time we use the uh, 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 pesticide synthetic pesticides. Otherwise, you can manage easily. Uh, with proper hygiene or proper maintenance, then you can easily manage the pest and disease through the organically. Uh, you can use also yellow and blue sticky tape to mechanically control pest, uh, sucking pest. Then mass apron are used. Visible observe uh, in hydroponics farm overnight are spreading of pest and disease because also a favorable condition for the pest and disease. So observation, daily observation is very, very important into the, when we work into the control hubs, that time we very uh, important to the visual observation. Also a hand sterilizer, food sterilizer, zigzag entry, uh, avoid the pest and disease entry into the house. Then the project operation guidelines uh, in, in staff, labor and caretaker are also a uh, well uh, skilled portion. So it's uh, a very easy, to manage a commercial hydroponics. In daily activity, you can also uh, uh, maintain what are the EC, pH, current temperature, relative humidity, what are germinations, uh, what you can spray in organically, would, who can be a, a, how can be a harvest, who harvest, is uh, such type of parameters you maintain the every day and uh, write down the daily activity. Then harvesting is also an uh, important factor which crops are mature, how to manage uh, with the markets according to germinations. So in this hydroponic system, you can reverse calculation. I need a, uh, in Diwali, I need a lots of lettuce. So I, in Diwali, I can grow uh, 45 days earlier, uh, planning to grow a uh, lettuce. So my harvesting are coming to Diwali or my bell pepper or cherry tomato are harvesting in Diwali. I can grow uh, uh, microgreens. So seven days earlier, I grow the microgreens to so harvesting in Diwali. So this type of planning are need to be uh, uh, commercialized and uh, uh, viability for the calculation. Okay. Then packaging also important. Then storage, self life, uh, then maintenance apart are also important. Then safety of unit because it's uh, uh, totally uh, polyethylene. So um, uh, outside of animals are uh, important. To, so maintain the uh, outside boundary, uh, restriction of an uh, unknown person entry, this type of safety you can maintain your unit. These are the, my contact number. You can have a more further detail. You can follow my LinkedIn. I will always be a po uh, post into LinkedIn. Then also uh, any query you can share my uh, in my email ID. These are the, uh, I have a freelancing, uh, anyone need uh, uh, require a consultancy, then also a contact from this line. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Ashish sir. That is a quite insightful talk on mm -hmm. hydroponics uh, and uh, its essential factors for its development. So I have discussed uh, different kinds of systems along with uh, growing methods and the employable techniques pros and cons along with the pros and cons for every system you have discussed pros and cons also so this is a quite insightful talk our uh, attendees so we have acquired many insights and we have also gathered so much knowledge and from basics to classics of uh, hydroponics thank you sir thank you so much and uh, we have uh, some questions, sir. Uh, shall we have a small question and answer session right now? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Coming with the first question, sir. Uh, how much initial in investment is required to set up a hydroponic farm? Uh, depend upon the crop selection and uh, depend upon the uh, firstly select of the uh, structure. When you use a fan and pair pulley of structure, so how many area per square meter is required around uh, its cost around uh, 180? uh hundreds are around it 180 hundreds meter square uh, rupees uh, required but if you use a net house and poly house structure nvph 
then we uh, needed uh, 1000 rupees per square meter type of structure how many area you uh, cover this is the matter for the initial cost of but in hydroponic system initial cost is too much that's why the viability is question mark okay sir okay and uh, sir a request, small request you can stop sharing your screen okay yeah Uh, now coming to the next question, sir. So what are the basic challenges that people face in hydroponics and aquaponics? Uh, in hydroponics, currently major ch uh, challenging is the market. Everyone is developed the hydroponics farming and everyone is uh, doing uh, exotic crops. But Indian currently Indian scenario, only the one or two person people are eat or consume the exotic vegetables. The, these are the major, I think, major uh, drawbacks or uh, challenges for the uh, hydroponics. Uh, definitely, you have a market from the uh, uh, outer country. You can export. You have a line. Then that is a different. Uh, it is a huge, huge demand of the uh, uh, this hydroponics project. Okay, sir. Sure. And uh, coming to that uh, aquaponics, I have a one uh, question, sir. So you said that uh, uh, the both the fish and uh, yes. plants can grow uh, simultaneously. So is there any chances of uh, like fish is an animal system, plant is a uh, plant different system. So by growing these both simultaneously, is there any like chance of transferring some diseases or some any different yes, environment? Yes, yes, yes. It's a very, uh, very hard to manage it. Because in aqua uh, animals are extractized more ammonia, yes. so which is uh, harmful for our uh, plants. But plants, uh, it's also a required different micronutrients, phosphorus, potassium. So it, we cannot be aired into the directly into the water tank. So fish are that. So simultaneously maintain is too much, too much difficult uh, for the uh, growing uh, aquaponics. So commercially, I I cannot be a seen a larger size of commercially uh, aquaponics farming. Okay, sir. And uh, one more question, sir. Uh, actually, coming to the ground level, like in, if we grow a plant system or a crop in a field, so there will be certain soil rhizosphere will be there, soil microbiota will be there. So that may show some effect on the nutrient conditions and also making the nutrients available from the soil to the plant system. Yes. But coming to this aquaponics or hydroponic systems, we may not have such kind of microbiota. So how it affects, is there any ch change in the plant growth or plant taste or any other traits? Um, Sandeep ji, I think uh, in we use uh, in a uh, uh, soil-based farming, we use the different kind of uh, uh, agriculture based uh, fertilizer. It's directly, it's some nutrient is directly not available for the plants. So that's why we require the microbes and uh, bacteria, beneficial bacteria. But in case of hydroponics farming and uh, in NFT or any, any kind of system, we directly use available form of water soluble fertilizer. So plants directly absorb from them. So when here we cannot be a, a require a beneficial bacteria from the uh, media. That's simple. Okay, sir. Next, uh, one more question, sir. Are there any chances of excess nutrient accumulation in the hydroponic system? Yes, uh, I have. Uh, it's a very, very uh, uh, disadvantage of hydroponic system. I will say uh, when, when we use a uh, autodozer, at the time, what happened? Some it is a machine, so he a lots of nutrient are added into the working tank. So totally plants are fed. So it, this is a very drawback when we use the excess of nutrient, then the plants failure chances are more. Okay, and uh, sir, one more question. This is also my personal question. Okay. Um, I have uh, used this hydroponics experiment for growing uh, rice plants in tissue culture laboratory. We mm -hmm. have used Yoshida solution that is designed particularly for rice growth. Okay. But what we have faced the problem is after like one day or two days, usually we used to change the media regular intervals. Mm -hmm. But the thing is uh, on the roots, I mean, on downside the plant where the root is dipped into the media so there is a, an accumulation of some salt kind of thing and also there is an accumulation of green color uh, 
this thing was developed on the root uh, okay. system first so, check the sandeep ji first you uh, put out the plants and the fill the roots the roots are sticky it means it's a not healthy sign second you see the green color particles are observed it's algal it's a no, uh, it's nothing things it, it cannot be harmful your roots but first stick uh, sticky roots then you little bit scratching no? then roots are uh, broken it means it's a uh, very unhealthy roots so these are the three signs you observe and then after you can change your uh, you can measure the bod biological oxygen demand in the root what are the temperature what is the nutrient these are the factor chain uh, uh, analysis and then your plants is ready okay sir fine and uh, one more question we have sir sir uh, like uh, are there any uh, government permissions or processes that are required for hydroponically uh, grown plants or products so is there any certifications required so for to release no. this product commercially no 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 certificate is required you directly sell uh, as a uh, label of uh, hydroponics products as well as uh, zero pesticide you cannot be apply any kind of pesticide through growing uh, crops then you can also uh, be a uh, say otherwise you analysis of pesticide uh, residue analysis report and then you can say this product is a zero pesticide based or to residue free pest products okay sir uh, then i have one more uh... question like as we are growing this under a complete uh, ideal uh, ideal conditions so are there any risks of that plant is being prone to certain biotic or abiotic stresses i mean if it is in a controlled condition so later on if, if you wanted to grow the same one as an uh, under uh, ground level or field condition so this may alter the plant system uh, is there it, it may make any changes permanently or it doesn't affect anything uh, uh, can you can you repeat your question like yeah. we are growing the plant systems in a complete ideal conditions like in under okay. polyos under ac okay. under pad systems uh, likewise so is this makes a permanent change on a, on this uh, plant system to withstand to without no, withstanding no, the this is, i i have given the some simple example yeah. you have a 4 gb data in your phone you have a access of amazon uh, flipkart you close with the your room with full ac full full facility you can grow automatically your grain the way understood and we you are also uh, after few weeks you go to the outside full sunlight full sweat with a full speed of wind driving so you can i you i can say you can understand so when we plants to given a full environment with a full protected condition the plant automatically healthy grow but it cannot be a change of any genetically change same seeds then uh, next progeny you can grow outside that's may be a different okay sir okay okay thank yeah, you yeah also uh, potato of seeds seedlings uh, multiplication use the aeroponics then after the potato outcome they use as a soil soil growing and then after uh, they distribute the plant farmers okay, okay sir so and uh... what is the export potential of this hydroponically grown crops could be i said huge you have a line of uh, any you have a uh, build your customer from outside the country then a huge demand when uh, uh, i was in maldiv they uh, they uh, purchase from ua it's a 4 dollar per kg of lettuce you can see uh, amazing it's a tons of lettuce are uh, import from the ua so it's a huge demand okay and uh, finally sir uh, are there cert- any certification courses that are available for these hydroponics courses are there any institutes offering such kind of courses uh no uh, currently i have no idea uh, okay. f- uh, last i have in brio hydroponics they they conduct the training and they given the certification but currently okay. Yeah. okay i sir. conduct in future i will conduct the uh, hydroponics training in foliampura in amdavad based but date are not currently declared so okay that could be so much useful uh, yes. uh, for the anyone uh, anyone uh, interested he can drop your uh, uh, mail or any query into the my email i will uh, definitely reply for them sure sir sure thank you thank you so much that process sir that talk is quite interactive and quite insightful thank you thank uh, we, you so much
on behalf of uh, team just agriculture and our agriculture 4.0 program we heartfully thank you for your quite insightful talk and with us utmost patience you have uh, answered all the queries that we have asked thank you sir thank you so much thank you thank you so much thank you now i would request the next host dr preeti to to take take the session dr preeti sir am i audible am i visible yeah yeah clear and visible okay over to you thank you okay thank you thank you sandeep sir uh, hope okay. i'm audible uh, to everybody slightly yes, apna camera adjust karo thoda okay i hope uh, this is fine now Uh, slightly uh, upward yeah yeah, yeah. Perfect, perfect okay thank you hope i'm audible to everybody a very good evening everyone on the behalf of shere kashmir university of agriculture sciences and technology team just agriculture and agro environmental education and farmers welfare society punjab i preeti words cordially welcome all of you to the to the third day of agriculture 4.0 the future of farming technology and agri entrepreneurship development which is a 15 days international online training program come workshop I wholeheartedly welcome all of you. As you all know, this program is jointly organized by Shere Kashmir University of Agricultural Sciences and Technology, Kashmir, Just Agriculture with Agro Environmental Education and Farmers Welfare Society, Punjab. Also, I must con congratulate a team Just Agriculture for organizing such insightful training programs at very regular intervals, and also for collaborating with such big firms and organizations within a such short span of time. So now. without wasting any time uh, i would like to bring your attention to the our next session and warmly welcome our chief guest of this session dr pratap mukhopadhyay who is currently an expert member of east kolkata wetland authority government of west bengal a guest faculty at vidya sagar university midnapur the chief editor of Mat matasya sangbad a magazine from fishing times publication house vigas andhra pradesh sir holds a phd degree in biochemistry from the university of calcutta and then he was a post doctoral fellow at the university of stirling in the united kingdom in the year 1992 and also sir has been a visiting scientist at inra that is national institute for agronomic research at stp in france in 2000 sir has given his service in icr where he worked as a principal scientist at the central institute of freshwater aquaculture bhubaneswar in the year 2013 sir retired from icr service as well Sir has worked with FAO as an aquaculture consist consultant, FAO Kenya office at Nepoi, and FAO Uganda office at Kampala. In 2016, he was appointed as a professor and mentor at the Neotia University, Diamond Harbour, Kolkata, where he was attached for more than a year during the year 2018-19. He has he is a uh, guest faculty at the Geology Department, University of. Uh, University College of Science Technology and Agriculture Baligarh Kolkata and recently completed a, a project funded by uh, Department of Science and Technology Government of India New Delhi as a principal investigator this project was related to science for equity empowerment and development which you have been uh, seen somewhere like seed division of dst government of india in association with kolkata based ngo Center for Environmental Management and Participatory Development (CEMPD). His present research in interests are in the area is in the area of aquatic bioresources in the context of rural development. Sir has Sir has uh, Sir has about two hundred peer-reviewed research publications, several book chapters, and authored books as well. Also, Sir has been supervised the PhD research work of eleven PhD research scholars. Sir has been a state awardee from the Department of Science and Technology, Government of West Bengal, as well as national awardee at ICR, New Delhi. We are very grateful to have you here, sir. Our audience is waiting to listen to you. So now I would like to request sir to join the podium and address sir. Address sir. Welcome you, sir. Hello, sir. I'm going to. Sir, so can you hear me? I Priti, just wait. Started. He is joining. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay.
um, actually i would like to request our participants to please uh, uh, stay for a while like in a couple of minutes our guest will be joining so before he joins i would like to i would like to just tell you about just agriculture uh, just agriculture is india's the largest agriculture professional platform with more than 5.5 lakh readers across the world it offers a it offers a platform for researchers students scientists and other agricultural yeah uh, so uh, just agriculture is india's largest agri professional platform with more than 5.5 lakh uh, readers across the world it offers a platform for researchers students scientists and other agriculture professionals to share about their latest agriculture innovations first issue of this magazine was launched on 5th september 2020 and till now 25 issues of our magazine has been published just agriculture the magazine and the newsletter newsletter has published 2500 plus articles from the academicians researchers and students of icr universities just agriculture Uh, the magazine is widely circulated among the farmers professionals and academicians among 28 states of india and 63 countries globally on the other hand agro environmental education and farmers welfare society aeefws aims at enhancing the livelihood opportunities for more than 1 million farm households in the country these both are the amongest largest network of agriculture and allied sector professionals in the country right now so you can say that um, these uh, organizations are actually uh, working to improve overall quality of life and compassing food nutritional and economic security as well and work towards a broader objective of improved one's health for example plants animals human soil and environment etc team please confirm if sir has joined just wait yeah okay
I would request request our participants to please keep patience. Sir is joining. Before sir joins, I would like to I would like to tell our participants about the core organizers of this program, which are uh, National Agriculture Higher Education Project Nahe, National uh, National Medicinal Plant Board, Government of India, MP UAT Udaipur, Maharana, uh, MP UAT Udaipur, Maharana Pratap Horticulture University, Karnal. Uh, our knowledge partners are Professor Jayashankar Telangana State Agriculture University, Hyderabad, Bidhan Chandra Krishi Vishwadhyaya, West Bengal, PNM KV Prabhani, Al Azhar University, Izit, Anand Niketan College of Agriculture, Varora, Shulini University, Shulini University, Solon, Himachal Pradesh, Utkarsh PDKV, Akola, uh, Jagannath University, Rayat Bahara University, Mohali, Chandigarh University, Quantum University, Rurki, Gita University, Maharshi Markandeshwar University, Sanskriti University, uh, Guru Kashi University, Batinda, Shobit University, Baba Farid Group of Institutions, Batinda. Tu Tula Priti Sir has joined. Uh, okay, okay, sir. Kindly introduce him. Okay. Uh, very good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. Very good evening, too. Uh, 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 actually, can you, sir, can, can you start? Yeah, 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 sir. Actually, we are very grateful to have you here, sir. Our audience is waiting for you to listen to you. So, without wasting time, I would like to request you to join the podium and address, sir. Please, thank sir. you, thank you, thank you so much. I welcome, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, good evening, all my friends, my friends, colleagues and uh, the respected uh, just agriculture faculties. Uh, today I shall be speaking to you on a topic uh, related to uh, aquaponics. Aquaponics or integrated aquaponics and urban farming. Uh, I think the, um, uh, the slides are all with you, madam. Can you, can you start uh, displaying the slides? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The first one, only first one, please. Yes, sir. And slowly you can you can proceed. Fine, sir. Our team is sharing the screen, sir. Okay, please. I hope See, that's visible, it's visible. Yeah, is it visible? Yeah, sir. Yeah, it's visible. Okay, I have yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, sir. Please continue, sir. Yeah. Uh, let me let me start by saying that you know. Uh, one of the most important resources for for uh, for survival, that is fresh water, is uh, is becoming uh, scarce everywhere, everywhere in the in the in the world, and that includes our country also. Now the fresh water scarcity uh, has to be dealt with uh, in a in a very pragmatic manner. Uh, while we uh, produce our food, uh, the total food production is dependent on freshwater availability. 
Now, now even if it is uh, uh, dry land agriculture, that they are also uh, the the crop needs uh, water. But what when we talk about um, the aquatic animals like fish, they will they will naturally they are since the water is the culture medium, so they need to they need constant uh, supply of of uh, fresh water all the time. Now, in such a scenario, uh, in particularly in certain areas of the country, and um, you will find uh, with the onset of summer, there is uh, a, there is indeed a very uh, huge scarcity everywhere. Uh, people uh, um, have to collect um, for their drinking and. Uh, and um, domestic use, personal use purposes. The domestic animals will have to be provided with clean water. And the crop, as, crop also has to be produced. Now, in such a scenario, uh, the um, technology that are used, especially in the uh, dry land areas, is, is called aqua aquaponics. Uh, I will discuss about this aquaponics as well as some related uh, the farming system that can be uh, that can have a good potential for the for the foreseeable future. Now let me tell you uh, what exactly aquaponics is. Now the aquaponics actually is um, the growing growing fish growing fish in a recirculatory system. Now recirculatory system means the same water will be, will be continuously used, will be continuously utilized. So there will be, there will be no wastage of uh, fresh water. And at the same time, this um, uh, continuous cleaning of the fresh water, which uh, gets deteriorated because of uh, the fish farming will be taken care of the, by, by the plants. So aqua is actually the growing fish in the system and ponies or the ponos, that's the Greek word, which means the growing plants with or without soil media. So in brief, aquaponics is an integrated system of aquaculture as well as uh, plant um, growing of the plants or plant cultivation, whatever you call it. Now, let me tell you what exactly, how exactly aquaponic system works. Uh, now, the uh, aquaponic system, aquaponic system works uh, in a very uh, interesting fashion. Here in this aquaponic system, can you can you show the next slide, please? Uh, in the in the in the aquaponic system, the fish are reared. Fish are reared in the aquarium or the tank, normally as they are they, as they are reared. In this, the tank size may differ depending on the capacity of the of the farming system. Wherein the where wherein the aquaculturists have um, ventured, and water from from this fish tank is pumped um, to the plants. These plants are um, reared uh, just by the side somewhere. What actually happens, unlike uh, uh, unlike terrestrial animals, uh, fishes um, uh, excrete ammonia. Um, fishes excrete ammonia, not urea, urea or uric acid. So fish is ammonotelic, unlike us, we are urea, we, we human beings or the other uh, vertebrates, we are all ureotelic, but fish is ammonotelic. Now this ammonia is uh, becoming, uh, the, the moment, since it is highly soluble, it gets accumulated slowly and it it can exert toxic actions. Now, this um, ammonia uh, reduction is the first task that has to be taken care of in a aquaponic system or in a system where fish is growing and these uh, fish is growing in a recirculatory 
uh, with recirculatory water. Now, this um, cleaning cleaning of the mess, I should say, this uh, I am telling you the um, ammonia buildup is a mess, is a mess in the system. Now, this is beautifully taken care of the bacterial population. Now, the bacterial population naturally present there. These bacterial population convert ammonia first into nitrite. And again, the nitrite is acted upon by another set of bacteria. I, I will discuss all those in detail a little later. Now, nitrites then convert, get converted into nitrates. I think these are all uh, known to all of you. Now, once the nitrates are formed, it becomes easy for the plants to absorb. Now, once the nitrates are formed, then there is no difficulty in um, uh, taking up by the roots of the plants. And once the nitrates are removed by, um, by, the, um, uh, by the plants, the water becomes clean or water becomes filtered, whatever you call it. And once the water becomes filtered or cleaned, it is again pumped to the fish system. So the, for fish, the ambient water becomes stress-free and plants also can get nitrates and uh, grow well. And for us, we get both, um, both plants and fish simultaneously. So this is exactly how the system of aquaponics works. So the main uh, contributors are a two sets of micro, uh, microorganisms, two sets of bacteria, I should say, who gradually convert ammonia to nitrite and then to nitrate. And these nitrates are taken by the plants and the whole thing is clean. This, this becomes a clean fresh water. Now, naturally the question uh, comes, naturally the uh, question comes, uh, why, why aquaponics? When there are so many uh, freshwater resources in our body, in our country, why should we go for aquaponics? Now, as I told you, uh, the scenario is not this. For example, I belong to a uh, place which is, the, which is the Gangetic Plain. Now, where, where there is no, no dearth of water, but in the, in the same state where I belong in Bengal, there are certain areas, uh, for example, in areas like Bakura, Purulia, uh, uh, parts of Midna, West Midnapur, parts of uh, Jhargram, uh, parts of uh, Birbhum. So these areas are to to some extent arid, or I should say semi-arid zones. And during summer months, uh, it becomes very difficult. The, the, water, uh, the water bodies get, get dried up and it becomes very difficult for the, for the people to live. What to talk of uh, animals and fish. So um, actually for such areas where there is a shortage of fresh water, uh, such such a recirculatory system of farming has immense significance. So uh, we uh, we we sh in such for such areas the water mm, uh, um, uh, has to be reutilized, and uh, there is no need to mm, uh, no need to uh, I should say. Uh, uh, arrange for uh, any manure or fertilizers. Uh, just you know, food production can be possible in this way, where the water is being recycled, and uh, there will be no waste generation also. So hydroponics uh, waste solution and aquaculture waste uh, uh, solids are uh, aquaponic ponically uh, dealt with and the entire waste uh, generated uh, can be used. And in such uh, systems, um, since, um, 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 since 
these are, are uh, done uh, mostly in the indoor areas or small areas and that uh, can be carried out year round uh, even uh, even under um, uh, drought conditions even under conditions of poor soil quality so and uh, security can be also provided so aquaponics provide additional advantage of farming for such areas um, yeah, can we have a next slide please wherein you can see uh, how a functional aquaponics is can be in operation uh, a functional next slide please uh, a functional aquaponics no not this one yeah this one please thank you you can see here the fish is uh, fish is uh, maintained in the tank fish is maintained in the tank as i told you the released ammonia from the fish is uh, gradually converted to nitrite and then nitrate nitrate by via bacterial action and this is then uh, air with the help of a air pump uh, um, uh, this is transferred to a place where the plants are reared these plants as we, as i told you they absorb the nitrates and grow while the roots clean the uh, clean the water for fish to reuse for fish to reuse and once uh, once this is done then this is again pumped back into 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 the aquatic system so water is utilized uh, both by the fish as well as by the plants but remember in such a system you cannot grow grow the large plants you cannot grow the large plants uh, at least uh, with the present uh, setup it has not been possible now you can see uh, the system has been um, uh, shown in uh, in a in a, in a diagrammatically how these uh, aquaponics function uh, in, a, in a system. Now, in in the in, a, in, a, in the university uh, here in Kolkata, uh, under the project. Next one, please. Can we have this next slide? Uh, these aquaponics. No, this previous the previous one. This one, yeah, yeah, this one, this, no, not this one, the previous one. Not this one, uh, madam. True, true, this one, exactly. Now here you can see, this is a, this is a project, uh, project uh, funded by the um, uh, Indian Council of Agricultural Research and Directorate of uh, Agriculture Government of West Bengal, wherein the aquaponic system of farming of uh, fish and uh, um, uh, certain plants are, uh, are still going on. Uh, this is a very interesting way. And um, uh, in the next slide also, you can see uh, the more detail how, how this aquaponic system uh, works and the, what are the components. What are the components? Next, next slide, please. Please go to the next one. Yeah, here also a, a part is a, a shown how the water is pumped out from the fish tank to the to the plants, and these plants are growing well. The main aqua aquaponic components main aquaponic components are you can see then the next one next one the main aquaponic components are fish tank previous one please one uh, yes the fish tank as i told you the a, a place uh, where to grow the plants the water water pumps the air pump air pump is required because uh, through air pump, oxygen oxygen is supplied to the uh, fish. 
then uh, uh, irrigation tubing, then irrigation tubing, then uh, water uh, um, water heater if it is required. It may not be required because uh, generally it uh, we are we are working in the summer um, um, summer months, but in certain areas, for example, in cold areas, in the, uh, for example, in our state, Darjeeling, in Darjeeling district particularly. Uh, even if, during the summer, the temperature is uh, remains low. Low means, you know, uh, below 15 degree. Now, when it, the temperature is below 15 degree, some kind of a water heater to raise the temperature to little more than 24 4 to 25 degree might be required for the fishes to grow. Because we are generally dealing with uh, warm water fishes. But uh, since uh, in in hilly areas also, uh, there is a water shortage and uh, such a water shortage can be dealt with using a water heater in the, through the aquaponic system. Sometimes a light is also required, uh, a light source, light source, but again, that is, that is optional because as I, as you can know that, you know, uh, when when there will be um, uh, there will be less sunlight, uh, photosynthesis photosynthetic activity will be disturbed. A light source might be required. Besides this, the the fish species and the plant species can be um, are are essentials. So these are the simple aquaponic components that you need. Next one. The no, 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 this one, thank you. The, the common, the fishes are in plenty. Uh, we generally use um, uh, species like carps. These carps are uh, quite popular and um, three major carps, three major Indian carps, uh, what we call Katla, Rahu, uh, uh, Megal, uh, Kalbashu, Bata are like that. These are uh, very common fishes and very high domestic demand, particularly in the eastern eastern India. For the rest of India, the fishes can be can differ, but uh, if you think of the eastern Indian states, uh, eastern as well as northeast northeastern states, you will find that um, carps are very popular. So. Uh, in through aquaponics uh, system, we generally use uh, the carp species uh, here for the um, for for most of the time. I, I have shown you the uh, particular species of carps. These are all rohu, lebio rohita. This can be grown very well. Uh, next next one. Next one, please. Now here, this is a very. Um, uh, this slide is uh, a little bit uh, interesting, might be for you. Um, the growing of fish is uh, very much uh, required, very much required. Fish consumption also is uh, increasing everywhere. And people are realizing the health benefit of uh, fish, con fish consumption. Then, Fish, uh, there can be different other fishes like ornamental fishes, which can be used as a cash crop. So first fish in human nutrition as a health food. Second, as a cash crop in the form of ornamental colored fishes, which many people uh, maintain at home and sometimes in the office also. Fish as an animal feed component, that also is very important. Some in animal feed, when some some of the fishes, uh, some of the trash fishes, some of the um, uh, some of the um, uh, um, uh, prawn species, prawn species, uh, these can be um, dried and used as a uh, fish meal. Fish, particularly now, fish now is utilized as a model for biomedical research. And most of you might have heard of zebra fish. Zebra fish genes and uh, human genes are to a great extent similar. 
see we we maintain lot of pets we have you know we have dogs pet animals we have cats we have many we have birds but you know they are so good so nice to us they love us we also love to maintain them but if you consider uh, gene wise similarity you will not find much similarity with a with a pet dog or a pet cat with, uh, with humans so um, that in, th in that sense zebra fish has lots of similarity then fish as in sports and recreation now the sport fishing is also are becoming very important in my state uh, in darjeeling district a lot of um, sport fisheries are coming up in lead, with regard to sport fisheries um, uh, himachal pradesh and then uh, uttar parts of uttar pradesh and um, uh, uttarakhand they are they are leading in sport fisheries then fish is contributing to cleaner environment cleaner environment means through through uh, vector control through bioremediation now they currently we are facing some problem of uh, mosquito mean, dengue dengue uh, uh, mosquito related uh, disease now these uh, mosquito larvae is to a great extent good uh, food item for most of the fishes now wherever there is uh, water accumulation some of these small fishes when uh, we re we release them they consume the mosquito larvae so that way fish uh, contributes to cleaner environment and also contributes in vector in in many places fish is uh, utilized as a source of livelihood security women empowerment and uh, I, I should say employment generation and you know fish has uh, export potential fish as a nut as a nutraceuticals and industrial applications there are several um, uh, several uh, uh, chemicals for example um, uh, some uh, some uh, some carbohydrates uh, you no know, oh, these are very important um, have, and industrial applications also and uh, fish finally i tell you the compared to many other crops fish utilizes much less water than crop for example here is a here is a comparison one kg of rice production we need to provide 1600 liter of water whereas for one kg of fish uh, it has been uh, estimated that they need th only 300 liter of water so fish has uh, multiple advantages besides being used as a you know, human food of very high biological value. And that's why fish should be included wherever there is water, wherever there is opportunity uh, in, in an integrated manner through, uh, through the growth of plants. Can we have uh, the next one, please? Next slide, please. Now, the moment, the moment we start in start incorporating fish in a system, we have to provide food. Now, when you say food, the food can be uh, in the form of microalgae, that is the natural food. Now, this microalgae culture demonstration is very simple, and a farmer or an aquaculturist who is not aware with the with the uh, production of uh, microalgae can be can be uh, explained or taught uh, through hands-on training just for two to three days. So microalgae or or in simple terms phytoplankton and zooplankton these form natural food items for fishes. Now yeah, these can be produced in situ. Um, I mean where there is a aquaponic system is being uh, continued side by side we can grow uh, microalgae and these microalgae can be provided as a food now over and above these um, tasks the next slide will show you how the, the along with uh, microalgae 
uh, along with microalgae, next one, please. Along with microalgae, the very preferred food item of fish, like uh, zooplankton, or yeah, this, yeah, so this zooplankton can be uh, can be reared. Now, the zooplankton, there are there are quite a large number of zooplankton species, but it has been seen that most fish species uh, prefer a particular zooplankton called rotifer. <clears throat> now. Rotifer can be again cultured, as I uh, told you, yeah, in, like um, uh, microalgae. Now, rotifer needs a food. Now, for culturing rotifer, we have to do uh, the culture of food for rotifer. Now, that culture of food for rotifer, for example, is chlorella. Chlorella is a preferred food item for rotifer. Now, simultaneously in a system, we can grow chlorella and this chlorella can be provided to rotifers and there will be rotifer growth. And these rotifer in turn can be periodically provided to the fish which is grown in the aquaponics system. Next one, please. I told you about uh, microalgae culture. So this is just a system uh, showing you how microalgae uh, culture can be done. And over and above microalgae culture, uh, which, which is not uh, sufficient. For example, for a human baby, uh, for a human baby, mother's milk is essential. But over and above uh, mother's milk, the baby needs to be provided with uh, some other, some other uh, food items of value. Now, these, uh, can you have a next, next slide, please? Now you can see in the next slide that the um, exogenously prepared uh, feed can be, uh, or I should say need to be provided to the fish for achieving rapid growth. Now, uh, natural, along with the natural food, natural food organisms, I should say, along with natural food organisms, uh, some kind of uh, exogenous uh, food items uh, prepared from say, uh, in, by combining uh, several in, uh, natural ingredients, like you know, ag agro-based residues, mostly agro-based residues, <clears throat> some natural colors uh, from some, from some um, spinach, from beetroot, like that and we can prepare such uh, some simple food items for the fishes. So this uh, um, uh, produced feed or, uh, or exogenously prepared feed need to be provided sometimes, although in a small, through a small amount, but it, it is required. You can see in the next slide, a, a farmer is utilizing its, his aquaponic system and providing the providing the feed. Next one, please. Please have a. Yeah, you can see uh, he is applying these um, uh, exogenous feed items. Now we now these uh, feed items are uh, industrially manufactured and can be can be purchased. But those who are uh, not willing, or those who think that it is not profitable to utilize industrially manufactured feed, they can prepare the feed themselves. Now, those, uh, those aquaculturists who want to prepare feed themselves, for them also, there is a, there is a protocol. I, I, have, I have given the, in the next slide that simple protocol and if you just have a look at that protocol, I think you will be able to understand how easy it is to prepare food. It is just like you know preparing our own food at the kitchen instead of uh, ordering it through restaurants or uh, hotels. Can you have a next slide, please? Here you can see, this is the uh, am I audible, uh, my my dear friends? Yes, sir. You're Hello? very well audible. Yeah, okay. okay. Now here you can see 
how how feed preparation can be done and <coughs> how to apply the feeds you can see the different stages have been <coughs> have been in, uh, have been shown here whatever ingredients are used the first thing <coughs> that we should do is to grind them to uh, to um, small pow to powders i mean particle size should be reduced just like you know in as atta chakki we can use um, pulverizers to prepare the uh, powdered form of the ingredients these ingredients can be groundnut uh, oil cake these ingredients can be rice polish these ingredients can be um, um, corn these ingredients can be many other things uh, soya bean powder uh, like that there are many here. but whatever it is along with this we need to provide certain micronutrients to be added to these and once this is done we prepare the moist dough balls and with the help of simple uh, hand pelletizer or motor operated pelletizer we prepared a uh, chowmin type of uh, chowmin type or the globular type of food uh, food and once this uh, chowmin type or the shimai type of or the globular type of feed is uh, or cornflakes type of feed that is a floating type now this those floating type slow sinking types and sinking types these because we provide uh, uh, feeds of different different types since In a, in a in an aquaculture system, the fishes uh, can be surface feeders, fishes can be column feeders, fishes can be bottom feeders. Some fishes dwell in the bottoms; they hardly come to the surface. So the same feed in different forms. Some are floating, some are slow sinking, some can be sinking. The, this way, we can prepare the feed, sun dry them. pack them and store them properly and uh, and uh, provide them so these are some of the simple uh, procedures of maintaining the fish in the aquaponic system next one please now once we once we do this once we do this we need to monitor the water quality continuously now why do i say water quality i will i will particularly emphasize on two three parameters the first important parameter is dissolved oxygen we need to ensure that the dissolved oxygen does not go below 3 ppm in the in the fish rearing system if there is a decrease in the uh, of dissolved oxygen then immediately aeration has to be provided uh through air pumps in addition to that water ph also has to be uh, maintained so you can see in the next slide i have give this is the uh, this one is the dissolved oxygen meter the next in the next slide you can see how important it is to uh, how important it is to maintain the ph of water and electrical conductivity now electrical conductivity ph these are very very important next next slide please madam can you can you can uh, little, go little fast uh, <clears throat> sure uh, this is the ph analysis and uh, also the analysis of other uh, quality uh, water quality parameters now these will have to be continuously looked into and now instead of uh, uh, taking the help of laboratory now we have uh, portable kits a simple kit just like you know a hand bag type now where you can get all these uh, analysis done in situ sitting in the same place next one please now there may be some other water quality parameters which we which we do normally in the laboratory but uh, some progressive uh, aquaculturists are there here who who uh, do not need to come to the laboratory to uh, do their water analysis they do it themselves with the kit 
Now the kits have come up. These are not expensive also. So this way uh, they are uh, following the water quality parameters. Next one, very quick. Now, uh, it is important that uh, we should also uh, uh, know, since we are providing the natural food in the form of um, uh, microalgae or phytoplankton, then zooplankton, we should see that there is not much deposit in the, in, in the bottom. The moment there will be more deposit in the bottom, there may be putrefaction, there may be bacterial growth, there may be uh, chances of uh, bacterial contamination, there may be uh, possibility of disease. Now, we should ensure that there is no residual accumulation in the fish rearing system. So in for that, we use a simple uh, glassware called Imhoff cone. This, this is called Imhoff cone. When the through Imhoff cone, when we find that the deposit is not much, we, we, we feel secured. But sometimes the deposits also are, are very high. You can see the next slide. In the next slide, we'll find the deposit is very high. Now, when the deposit is very high, which means uh, either the system is not being taken care of or feed is uh, provided more than it's required, feed is not provided in time, feed is not provided uh, uh, in the right frequency. Uh, so uh, feed has to be provided uh, at the right time when the fish is hungry or when fish uh, needs it, not when we have time. When fish needs it, we have to provide the, provide the feed. Now, uh, when uh, when we are we become little insincere to, on these parameters. For example, uh, for each animal, for each human being, uh, there is a um, uh, there is a feeding frequency. There is a um, uh, what I should say a, a natural biological clock works in our system when we feel hungry and. Uh, feed provided during that particular time only will be absorbed very fast. So these are some of the very basic principles which we should um, um, we should note. Next one, please. Now over and above these, there are quite a few things. Next one, kindly, uh, kindly pass on to the next one. Now over and above these, so some of the small items uh, like you know, hand nets, now some um, filters, uh, oxygenation um, uh, e e items. These need to be these need to be uh, kept uh, as a standby uh, standby facility. Now these are just shown, uh, you know, in the, in the form of a drawing that this should be this should be also uh, kept ready while uh, carrying on the aquaponic uh, system. Uh, the next one. Now, uh, um, besides aquaponics also, uh, you know, um, there we should, uh, here we have shown that, you know, sometimes uh, uh, microscopic examination of uh, water, water is required. I have told you about only physical and chemical examination, <clears throat> but sometimes uh, microscopic examination also is required to ensure whether there is any uh, any uh, disease causing organisms, like you know uh, some parasites, uh, some some paras mostly some parasite parasite uh, attack is there. So if the parasite is there, so we have to take care of. So like that, you know, we <clears throat> we just need to ensure that uh, uh, there is the the system is pathogen free as much as possible. And if the if there is a, um, a harm, harmful parasite, this can affect the uh, fish organs, and even fish may even die. But we don't want even a single fish to die through aquaponic system. So 
these are some of the um, uh, materials that we should uh, keep ourselves in readiness. Next, next one, please. Uh, see, these are the uh, some of the plants that uh, that grow. These plants that grow are uh, like you know these uh, coriander leaves, which is very easy easy to grow. Even even during the uh, non season, when the coriander leaves are uh, can be marketed, coriander leaves, then you know palak uh, spinach can be easily grown through aquaponic system. <clears throat> then you know mint leaves also. You can see the next one, the mint leaves can be easily easily uh, uh, reared. So coriander, uh, uh, spinach. Then you know um, main mint. Next one, you can see the mint leaves. Next one, please. Yeah, here you can see. These can be very easily and conveniently grown, utilizing um, these aquaponics. So these are grown uh, without any soil base. Without any soil base, you can see the. From the uh, from the leaves, how healthy the plants are. Now these aquaponics system, you can grow these lettuce can be grown. The lettuce, these you know uh, mint, uh, coriander leaves, uh, these small small uh, plants can be very easily grown, uh, which uh, mostly we use for garnishing garnishing purposes. Uh, besides, there are some uh, leafy vegetables, as I told you, like uh, spinach. There are quite a few other leafy vegetables that can also be grown. Next one. Next one, please. Now, over and above, yeah, over and above this system of aquaponics, the urban farming is uh, utilizing a system called uh, bioflock. So in the bioflock system, this bioflock system is here is explained here. Bioflock system also uh, works on the same principle, almost on the same principle. Only thing that we have to provide the carbon source, little little bit of nitrogen source, and again here the ammonium nitrogen is converted by uh, bacteria called nitrosomonas or nitrosococcus to nitrides. And these nitri nitrides, through the action of nitrobacter, becomes nitrates. And nitrates ultimately get converted by, again, bacteria to gaseous nitrogen. Mainly the pseudomonas uh, and the acromobacter are responsible. And these nitrogenous, uh, nitrogen as such is then um, uh, gets mixed in the atmosphere. In the bioflock system, we only produce fish. So there is no question of uh, rearing any aquatic plants or any terrestrial plants, but the, uh, on the system of growing uh, certain hardy fishes. When I say hardy fishes, I mean to say mostly air breathing fishes mostly air breathing fishes or catfishes, which are hardy, which are able to withstand a complete disregard of dissolved oxygen, which can uh, consume um, detritus and decayed matters for their growth. So this kind of uh, bioflock system is also becoming uh, important in, uh, in as a part of urban farming uh, over and above uh, aquaponics. Next one, please. Next slide. Can you please go to the next slide a bit quickly? Here you can, we have shown you how this uh, bioflock system works. As I told you here, there is no question of plants. Only in large tanks, we, we rear them. We stock fish at a very heavy concentration. So that way you can say it is some kind of an intensive farming in a small area. 
and these intensive farming of such hardy fishes which do not uh, care about oxygen dissolved oxygen they can respire through through atmospheric oxygen since these fishes have accessory respiratory organs uh, inbuilt into their system so over above gills uh, they have accessory respiratory organ and they can <clears throat> breathe air atmospheric uh, air uh, atmospheric oxygen through air uh, next one please next one please uh, please please these are some of the uh, materials or equipments i should say that need to be uh, need to be uh, required that that will be need to be kept for for um, both um, aquaponics as well as for the purpose of um, bioflock culture system bioflock culture system next one please next one please now uh, whatever we do whether it is aquaponics whether it is uh, bioflock some kind of uh, maintenance is needed here you can see the aquaponics system is going on in a big way at barakpur in that institute of uh, central Inst central inland fisheries research institute at barakpur in west bengal this is an institute under indian council of agricultural research new delhi the next one please now uh, here we are just uh, making a comparison of water use in different system and we uh, say that uh, integrated water ponics um, uh, since there is no discharge there is no environmental pollution this system is a sustainable one and uh, contributes to cleaner environment uh, and, uh, you can see the uh, next one please now um you may uh, when i said uh, it is sustainable naturally uh, the question may arise why it is considered uh, uh, sustainable now uh, since it is uh, sustainable there are uh, definite reasons behind it the first reason is what waste emission is utilized to feed the plants so the waste generated is not released to the environment now the fish and plants create a polyculture producing uh, uh, two food products water is reused in the recirculatory system and for local food production for local economy redu reducing the transportation cost uh, these are very say this is also a form of of organic uh, type of production system where uh, there is no uh, no contamination of uh, of harmful chemicals or pesticidal components uh, um, in this uh, production system so since these are happening i i i must say that both this system are uh, sustainable in the real sense of the term next one now sometimes a uh, disease may uh, occur which is uh, generally very rare but uh, there are some uh, herbal treatment procedures uh, uh, incorporating uh, neem leaves um, raw haldi uh, um, garlic uh, tulsi um, common salt mixture and uh, these are uh, some of the materials which uh, have been developed by the uh, farmers uh, themselves you can call them uh, these as the uh, first traditional knowledge so uh, utilizing this traditional knowledge they are able to take care of the disease problems in case there is any 
नेक्स्ट वन आई हैव आई हैव टोल्ड यू अबाउट व्हाट बायोफ्लॉक इज सो आई हैव नॉट आई हैव नॉट डिस्कसिंग नेक्स्ट वन प्लीज गो टू द नेक्स्ट वन now what i say the, the future is uh, um, i i find the future is quite bright and um, um, the production cost will gradually go down structural Conduction of human food of very high, high biological value uh, at locations where fresh water is becoming uh, scarce. Uh, with this, I uh, wish to conclude and would be happy to uh, answer any questions that you may be having. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for such a wonderful and insightful session. without any doubt our participants must have enjoyed and learned from this session so you explained the concepts very beautifully and scientifically uh, this resilient farming system which is environmental friendly can definitely prove a sustainable method to secure our food as well as nutrition uh, this technique of farm made feed preparation for the culture pond and water use in different systems are also were actually very simplified very well so, so on the behalf of team team just agriculture and our participants i thank you once again Uh, with your permission now i would like to ask a few questions that our participants has asked please please yes sir so uh, like uh, there are some entrepreneurs as well in this meeting so someone okay. has someone is concerned about the common problems in aqua, aquaponics like so okay. uh, so what do you think which, which are the common problems that are associated with this technique uh, see uh, the common problems uh, that may occur is to is to choose right exogenous feed because uh, the feed uh, that you provide to the fish <laughs> should be should be uh, what i should say uh, should be um, uh, uh, very well accepted well accepted and it should be accepted uh, within minutes of uh, providing it to the water now if the feed quality is not good it uh, fish may not consume because remember uh, feeding an aquatic animal and feeding a terrestrial animal are entirely different a terrestrial animal if it doesn't accept you can understand you can remove that feed you can replace that feed with something else but once you put it in water it means if the fish doesn't eat it the water eats it now the moment water eats your feed water gets polluted and if water gets polluted it becomes stressful for the fish fish to grow and naturally there will be a lot of uh, complications disease problems environmental problems so while choosing the feed please see that the feed is feed quality is very good water stability of the feed is uh, is good and uh, uh, feed is to be provided uh, only uh, when uh, uh, at at a specific time and in specific quantity and finally what i should say feed should be given in tune with the biological rhythm now this is all sometimes not taken care of now as i told you we say for example at about 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock in the day time all of us everywhere uh, we feel hungry so we need to have lunch now if lunch is provided at 5 o'clock in the evening then that is not lunch and uh, surely that food will whatever however good the quality is it will not be of much use to the 
to us. So in feeding, feed quality not only should be good, feed has to be given, at, as I told you, in tune with the biological rhythm at, at particular frequencies. So uh, two, three things should be taken care of. What to feed, how much to feed, how feed. These are some of the some of the things that if we can take care, I don't think uh, there should be any problem in the aquaponics. Okay, thank you, sir. So the next next question is like so. This technique seems to be a little expensive. Uh, some of us might argue about this. So what are the main notable points or say merits about this technique that can attract our young entrepreneurs to prefer this technique or say like another startup for this technique? See, initially uh, to, st uh, to, to start up, I should say Even you know, and the fiberglass tanks can be can be used. Maybe if, if if someone tries with six fiberglass tanks, where the fish can be reared, and some fiber uh, um, one the will that will come through gravity and i so initially hello excuse me sir so your network is little unstable can you please explain it once again it's not it's not uh, yeah um, um, now it's audible sir earlier it was little unstable no what i should say that uh, to start with one can um, start with a small small setup. This, when I say small setup, for example, I can say uh, six 500 liter uh, fiberglass tanks can be utilized to grow fish. And some fiberglass trees where the Plant growth, this water will come back through gravity. So just by regulating a, a valve, it, the water can be taken up. So I do not think to, uh, to ensure the validity or its efficacy, one can start in a small way. And uh, I think, you know, if anyone can uh, like to contact me, my uh, WhatsApp number and mail ID also are given. Uh, I can I can send them to some other related information, which they can study through. And there are lots of um, um, international publications and methodologies also given. So just ha have a study and try. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the next question is coming, uh, which is like whether waste from aquaponics can be used for earthworm rearing also. Like somebody is curious and asking about this also, sir. Hello, can you hear hear me, sir? Hello. Any any question? Ah, uh, sir. Actually, next question is whether waste from this aquaponics can be used for used for earthworm rearing also. Surely, 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 because uh, that a part of it. I think that is a novel idea. Uh, now I will think a part of that water can be channelized, not entire, 
but a part of, of it can be channelized because this water, remember, this water is nutrient laden. Now, some, some uh, residual feed items, some nitrogen, some phosphorus, some potassium, some other nutrients will be always there. So it is definitely possible. I have not tried, but, but I will definitely give it a try. Thank you very much for this novel idea. Thank you, sir. Uh, so the next question is, how to reduce nitrate poisoning in aquaponics, sir? How to reduce nitrate poisoning? Yeah, again, I tell you, uh, That way, hello, sir. So please unmute yourself. So you are mute. Please unmute yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Am I audible now, madam? Yeah. Yes, sir, you are audible. Yeah. You know what I mean to say, a, a, a feeding, a right feeding strategy is very important to reduce the expenditure, to reduce the pollution load, uh, to uh, to ensure that the aquatic environment is stress-free. So right feeding strategy, not only the quality of the feed, the right feeding strategy, including emphasis on more and more use of natural food. Hello, sir. Am I audible now, madam? Hello? Uh, yes, sir. Hello? Yes, sir. Sir, in between your uh, connections seems unstable, sir. No, yeah, you yeah, are yeah, audible, true. but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sir, so can we uh, uh, can we try to communicate through mail for the rest of the questions, sir? Surely, surely, okay, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So actually, sir, uh, if some more questions are there, so we will try to communicate with you through mail, and we will uh, like uh, definitely give these questions to surely. participants surely. again. Surely. Okay. So thank you so much once again for your valuable time with us, sir. I personally would also like to say thanks to you, and it was worth listening to you, sir. Uh, with this session, today's session come to, comes to an end. We shall meet again tomorrow with new and interesting topics. So with this, thank you, sir. Thank you all. Good night.